All right, so those are some of the stories. I want to comment on Nayor. Um, Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, absolutely massive. He's an incredibly talented wide receiver. Uh, For those folks who only knew him when he signed with Texas, uh, I followed him uh, previously when he was at Wyoming, and he was a constant on the Earl Campbell, Tyler Rose Award watch list just because every week it seemed like he was putting up big numbers or had solid games, and that was one of those as somebody who's not a Texas fan, but, I mean, I – you know, can respect and appreciate everything that comes with that. So when I saw them pick him up, I was like, damn, because, well, quite frankly, I didn't want to see him at Texas. I mean, I think that highly of him that, hey, I'd rather you go play for Oklahoma. That'd be great for me. Or play for Baylor. They could use you. Or, you know, that would all be great. But you had to go to Texas. And, you know, having said that, I thought he was going to be a massive contributor for them this year. I didn't get as, you know – high on life over uh, Ajayi Hall's instant impact as I did in Ayor's. I thought Nayor with Worthy would be just an incredible one-two punch. And the rest of the guys they brought in, like Ajayi Hall or a, a Billingsley, who I know is a tight end, you know, that's that's the shiny new toys. But, I mean, I, he was a proven toy. Like, he, you know, he had, like, scuff marks on him and stuff, but he was still the best toy. And I really thought he was going to have a big year. So to see that news yesterday uh, was shocked for one. And uh, number two, just really bummed out for Isaiah Nayor because I think he's, you know, like I said, a really good player, and that's a big loss for Texas. And, and certainly any hit on their offensive line is uh, going to be to their detriment as well because that is the one area you go into this season uh, and you really see a lot of the question marks uh, emanating from. So that's another one for that already question mark filled offensive line and uh, certainly a downer for UT. Doesn't mean they can't still win a bunch of games, but. That's uh, that's definitely not good news that they received yesterday. So that's that. Sark, again, will be talking to the media a, a little after 5. I traded some text messages back and forth with Jeff Howe. And there's a chance, in fact, Jeff said this to me over the weekend when I saw the Nayor uh, news and the offensive lineman's news, uh, offensive line news, um, that they thought that after the scrimmage there was a chance that they would maybe name a starting quarterback. And there was a little bit of rumblings about what would it be. Would it be yours? And then, of course, our Hudson card. And so not sure that happens today or not, but that's also something to watch as well. If it's not yours, that's going to be hilarious. It's going to be yeah. hilarious with all this. I mean, and not, you know, I'm sure there will be somebody. Well, wait a second. Nobody guaranteed he'd be the starter when he came over and nobody guaranteed this or that. And, hey, maybe Hudson Carr just had a hell of an offseason. But, man, for all that talk about this one player in particular, all this time, if it's not him, and I'd still believe it'll be him, but if it's not him, that would certainly be something. Uh, if the, the big million-dollar transfer quarterback from Ohio State is is not your starting quarterback, I, I that would be really sh- kind of shocking. Yeah. Well, and if you ask – the one thing I wonder, because he's a, and, and clearly he's got the arm talent everybody knows about, but it's a lot more than just how hard you can throw the ball. And – um, he was not, and this this is telling because of where Texas wants to be. Now, look, there are not uh, C.J. Strouds just walking around there in the world that everybody can have, but he would not have even come close to getting C.J. Stroud off the field. It wouldn't have been one of those things that, like, C.J. Stroud throws picks on consecutive drives. They're throwing Quinn Ewers in there. They're just going to say, C.J., something wrong, and, yeah. you know, and let him go. So where Texas wants to be with where Quinn Ewers is right now – like, that's not who he was when he left. Now, that's not to say he's not going to be that guy, but he's not that guy yet. Yeah, but, I mean, so if he's not that guy yet, then why are we? Why have we yeah. hyped him up to the extent that we have? To yeah. where this is like the game-changing, you know, move of the century and all this other stuff that it's been made out to be. I mean, certainly it's lost some of its steam since Arch Manning committed, which, I mean, there's another, like, okay, let's just hype it up for another year before we actually see him, but... We've had an entire offseason of Quinn Ewers talk and Quinn Ewers this and the receivers they've got. And, you know, certainly there's the offensive line question. But, man, Ewers and Worthy and Bijan and, like, like that's all we've been talking about. And I don't think that anybody for one second, I mean, maybe some Texas fans who, you know, are just sitting there looking at it logically have thought, well, hey, maybe there's a chance. that Like, who's really been saying that Hudson Carr could win this starting job? Like, I mean, outside of, like, a Texas podcast that only Texas fans listen to. So I haven't heard it. Yeah. I don't think anybody else who's not a Texas fan has heard that anywhere. I haven't seen it on Twitter. Certainly you can point me to it. But if it's not Quinn Ewers after this offseason, does that mean we have to do another year of just talking about how great he's going to be one day? 
because I'm kind of sick of it at this point if he's not the starting quarterback. Well, and, and then in a year, you're going to have to discuss the competition they'll have with Arch Manning. Well, and, when and he gets Sark's on job. And whoever, yeah, I mean, like, and whoever's the quarterback, if in fact, that doesn't mean he's not. We don't know that. The decision right. hasn't even been made yet, but that would but, be that would but, probably throw some water uh, on someone's and, head. And, and not to be um, lost in all this, they have a recruit on campus right now, and Malik Murphy was a dude that they were all thrilled to get, who now I can't envision – a situation where he's ever going to see the field for them yeah, outside of a bunch of torn ACLs. I've been wondering so, about him for a while. Yeah. yeah so um, I don't know what that says about him. I mean, now it's just this, this mad dash for quarterbacks, you know, used to, if you had, you know, that you could stagger, you could not sign a quarterback in a class because you'd be like, well, if we really like this guy, this dude's never going to play. Well now Baylor didn't last year. Yeah. You know, but they, but they want it, but you know, a lot of teams want to, you know, everybody wants to have one in every class. Uh, now, you know, Alabama's got two in this class. And so, you know, what does that mean for a guy like Malik Murphy, who everybody would have wanted to have for the most part well, a I mean, couple that, of years ago? That kind of plays into what you're saying, though, is everybody stocks up on quarterbacks. Yeah. So it's not really like his situation's all that unique. But, yeah, when you've got a guy who transfers in who's already being touted above you and then another guy who's not coming in for, well, almost a year because he's got to play his last year of high school football and he's already been basically named the starter by the public before you. I mean, I'm sure that motivates Malik Murphy. But, you know, I haven't heard a, a mouse fart about him, it seems like, in a really long time. And, you know, there was a lot of celebrating at the time when he got, uh, you know, the big commit announcement out there and signed and all of that. But, I mean, since then, how I was like, oh, yeah, Malik, it's like the guy that you forget about. Oh, yeah, Malik Murphy's there, too, with the Ewers thing and with the Hudson card and, you know, eventually Arch Manning, Manning yeah. and all of that. So, yeah, I mean, that's... That's not done like you said. I mean, Ewers could very well be named the starter, but if he's not, that's that's wild. Uh, Andrea Cameron, oh, good to have you, Andrea. Her son, Josh at Baylor. Nayor is a huge loss for Texas RH5. I think the offensive lineman being injured is probably bigger even than the loss of the receiver for yeah. Texas. Yeah, well, well, I'd like, we'll see. I don't know about their offensive line. Is, they just don't need to lose depth on that. Look, what we saw it here at Baylor a few years ago, when you don't have – depth in that line it creates a stress not only i had, to, I had all the offensive linemen in here a couple weeks ago we did individual things on them and you can see them on our athlete plus section on sikkim 365.com but asking them the guys who were here early on about all right when you had seven eight guys and somebody tweaked an ankle in practice and you didn't know what was going on they're like it was that was tense it was tense for them and that's what can go on when you don't have depth at, at certain positions especially offensive line which they don't yet on the, the line. The fronts are where they're they're deficient, and that's what's going to be kind of the swing of the season, whether they really take a step forward or not. Before you even get to the quarterback, because whoever it is, is it Ewers or Carter, Malik Murphy or whoever, uh, if they don't have time, there's going to be games they lose to better teams up front. Yeah, I mean, depth wise, it certainly is. I think just from a proven player standpoint, like that's where I'm coming from. Yeah. Nayor is just a proven commodity. I mean, yeah. over ten touchdowns last year. Not granted, it's at a different level of, of play, but I don't see why he wouldn't come in the Big Twelve and, and you know have some pretty good numbers uh, all the same. So yeah, I mean, proven wise, I think it's Nayor, uh, but certainly need wise. Yeah, they could afford to lose a wide receiver more than they could afford to lose an offensive lineman. So, you know, congrats to the folks who put them preseason top 25 and then had this drop like two days later. You know, the fact that they're going to lose two big pieces. But, yeah, I mean, they, they can ill afford that. And, and that's the, you know, the breaks that you get with the season. Sometimes you stay healthy and sometimes you don't. And right now they are not healthy and, and they got to hope that they can remain that way because they can't afford to lose too much more. If, uh, in fact, anything else is mentioned today today in the media session, well, Jeff Howell will probably join us either tomorrow or Wednesday on whatever, even including the possibility if they do name a quarterback one or QB one. Mike George, it's because Texas fans are desperate to have Texas back, that they cling to any and every thread that unravels to hold on to, and yours is a thread. And eventually, yeah. one of these has to become the dog. Just take them to a level. And and uh, but again, that's uh, the, the injury news on Nayor, the offensive lineman, not good at all today. Today's lineup.